Today I'm going to show you how to log into Homebase and use Sutton Designer. So to get to this screen, you just need to go to homebase.sutton.com, type in your Sutton email and your password. If you don't know your password, you can click Forgot Password and um, you'll get a link sent to your recovery email or phone number. Click login with your personal computer. If you do press login with the shared computer, it will log you out after about 15 minutes. So if you are working on designer, I suggest using a personal computer. And then once you're in here, you can click on the designer app. If you can't find it here, it is in apps and tools and it will be down here. Uh, I do have mine in my favorites. So click designer. And you can also, you'll get a little pop-up that says launch app. Um, so you click that. I have it saved so it just goes straight in. Once you've clicked launch app, you'll end up here and this is your designer um, dashboard. Now that you're in Sutton Designer, this is what your dashboard looks like. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the complete dashboard. So. The first thing we're going to look at is the top. We have templates and that's where you automatically come into. My designs and this is where your designs will be saved. And brand assets and this is where you can add your own information and it will automatically populate in um, all of the templates. In um, templates, we have a list of collections down the left hand side. Um, these are all of your options for different editable materials. Um, so we have listing packages, business cards, posters, statistics, um, social media, buyer seller guides, listing presentations. There's tons of options. Um, within each collection, there are a bunch of categories. So in social media, we have February posts, March posts, April, and so on for all of the holidays of the year. Um, we also put fun holidays in there, so you can see in March we have Pi Day and also Daylight Savings, that kind of thing. Um, and then there's also like listing posts, uh, market updates, office templates, um, new age of posts, um, awards, tons of options in here. Um, and that is a complete tour of the Set and Designer dashboard. So now that you know how to get to Sutton Designer and what the dashboard looks like, let's look at adding your own brand assets. So for brand assets, click on brand assets <laughs> and um, you'll see in here the first thing that pops up is um, colors and fonts. So if you have a specific color scheme that you use that isn't um, the general Sutton color scheme. Um, you can add them in here by clicking the plus button and typing in the RGB code um, or if you know the other codes better you can click this arrow and um, it will bring you to whichever one you know and then you can select the color that way. Alternatively if you just want to pick colors you can toggle this bar to whichever general color and then select from there depending what you're looking for. You play around with it. You can also use this little thing and um, select a color that way. Um, so that is how you would add colors. You can add as many as you want and that is your brand asset color palette. And you can also upload fonts. So if you have a font package that you use, you can drag and drop it into here and that will upload your specific fonts for your templates. And here we have logos. Um, just click upload and you can add your logo in. This is for if you use a logo other than the normal Sutton logos. Um, so if you have a specific one with your name you can use that. Smart text. Um, so these are just text that you would use often. So you could add um, your email, your website, your social media, your tagline, slogan, um, whatever you want to add here. Um, these are common things that you would use on lots of templates. That's what you want to put in here. 
and that will make your life a lot easier when you're actually in editing the template. Then we have images. Um, I would use this for headshots um, or images that you would use often. So if you do have um, like social media icons that you use a lot, you could put that in. If you have um, any graphics made by graphic designers that you like to use, you would put that in. Um, just anything like that you can throw into the images. Elements. Um, again, you could put social media icons in here. Um, and you could put uh, specific shapes, banners, anything like that. Um, there's tons in Sutton Designer. You don't have to add any in here, but if you do have elements that you have had created, maybe for your website or something, you can add them in here. Um, and then any external files or anything. These you probably won't use very often, um, but the top ones you will. And that is how you edit your brand assets. Now that you have gotten an idea of how to use um, brand assets and where to upload them, Let's take a look at editing a template. So to edit a template, you need to find the one you want to use. Um, so you can choose from any of the categories along here. I'm going to do a feature sheet for this example. Um, so I've chosen feature sheet. I am printing an 11 by 17 feature sheet because um, that is the one I want. And let's see, I think this one looks good. So just hover your mouse over the template that you want and click use. Okay, so this is what your template looks like when you click on edit. This is where it will bring you into. You can see here that it says pages and you can see there's two pages, um, but it's kind of in the way of your template. So while you're editing, you can just click this and we'll put that down and then now you can use this to toggle through your pages. On this side it shows you the restrictions so with designer um, at head office we can restrict anything so that you cannot make changes so if we wanted to like always have this this color or something um, but we don't really do that um, it's just a function of the app so everything should be editable but it will have a list here of all the things that are editable, which should be everything on the template. Um, so you really don't need to worry about this restrictions tab. You can ignore that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to want to do when I come in here, um, let's say I just want to change the text. If you added um, brand asset text, that's right here in my assets. You can see this is the test one I added in that previous video. Um, so that's there if you do want to replace any of this information with this information. Otherwise, you can just double click on the text box and that will bring you into the box and then um, you can change whatever you want to change. So let's just call it, uh, oh, that's capitals that and then you can also change if you're not in Toronto um, uh, yeah so you can change all of that around um, you can see that by typing Owen sound it was larger than Toronto and now MLS is hiding so we can either extend this to bring that out or you could move MLS down. But in this case, I would rather have um, that just extended out. Um, if you want to bring it in so it's underneath um, the street name. But you can move all these things around. So whatever you think looks the best, um, you can add your MLS number and anything else in there. Change your name if you have a different title, change your office, email. Um, you can do this. Uh, if this, say this was a phone number, I've clicked on this and then now I can say replace text and it's going to replace it. So that's the easiest way to add 
the brand um, assets in. Just select the one you want to replace, go to My Assets, and click Replace Text, and then that will just replace all of your text. Then you can come to Images. If you added your own, they're going to be in My Assets, so this is where you would replace your headshot um, and anything that you would use often. For this template, you can add your images here by dragging and dropping them here, or if you double click on this, it will open your downloads and then you can find your image or images and open them and they'll show up in here. Once you've done that, you can replace all the pictures that are in here. So we can do that simply by dragging and dropping the image on the tile that we want to replace. Or you can press so that the image is highlighted and then come and say replace image and that will replace the image. You can see that some of these went in blurry and that happens when the image is really high quality and the system hasn't saved so it hasn't um, fully refreshed yet. So if you do see blurry images, click File, Save, and then you'll see they'll go crystal clear. For this one, um, if you do drop an image into a tile and it's kind of placed it a bit weird, um, you may want to use a different photo in that tile if you just can't make it work. Or you can double click and then now you can change where this image is placed um, and you can also stretch it out and then that way you can bring it so that it makes a little bit more sense and then click done when you're done. So that's how you would replace text and photos. Um, make sure you go through both sections, replace all the information and all of the images and then when you're done you can come up here and name your um, design. I forget what number we did, but we'll just go like this. And now I've named my design. All right, and it's saved. You can see up here it says saved. Now that you know how to edit a template, I'm going to show you the different download options. So we have this here. It says download. Click that. And your options are JPEG, PNG, and PDF. So when would you use each of these? A JPEG, this is typically used for online posting. Um, it tends to be a smaller file size um, and it can toggle between low and high quality. So depending on what you're doing, um, and it even says here, ideal for web and images. So if this is something that you are going to be putting online, you can use um, JPEG. The smaller file size will help with it loading correctly on websites um, and not taking up too much space. Um, for this one, you can toggle the quality and then click Start Download. This will only download the page that you're on. It will not download both pages. So if you did want both, you would have to download both. And you can see up here it says preparing. Do not leave this page until that's gone. If you do, that it will not download. So once it says download ready, now you're welcome to leave the page and your download will show up down here if that's the way your computer is set up or it will show up in your downloads. So that is a JPEG. The next one is PNG. Um, these are much larger file sizes um, and they're quite high quality so depending what you're doing with it um, the PNG might be the best option for you. You can make the background transparent in this case we don't have a transparent background so that would be pointless but if you were doing a logo or something you could have a transparent background um, and again if you were using this one you would just click start download wait until this says download ready before leaving this page and this type of download also will only download the page you're currently on so you would need to go to the other page to download it if you have multiple different designs. 
And since this is a larger file type, you can see it takes longer to download. And the last one here is get PDF. Um, this one is used for printing quite often. This one will download multiple pages. So right now we're downloading all pages, which is one and two. If you are sending it to get printed, click high resolution print quality, this is important, and drop down these published settings. You will need to select manual bleed. This will bring the images over the edges of the template so that when a printer then cuts, you have the image straight to the edge. Uh, public Publish with cut marks. This tells them where to cut so that bleeds going over the edge of the page. The cut marks are showing us exactly where that line needs to be cut. And download as CMYK. This is the color code that printers print in. So um, the data in the file is in the same um, format that a printer will read the data. So it, this is very important. Um, otherwise, your colors may not come out as you've intended or the printer may not be able to print at all. So um, I highly recommend just selecting that um, to start and then click start download. PDFs typically take a bit longer because um, they are larger file type and especially since this is two pages. Um, so this is where you really want to be aware of this um, preparing at the top and don't leave until it says download ready. All right, now our download is ready. Now we can leave the page. So now that you've downloaded your template, I'm going to show you how to get out of um, a design. So if you are done completely and you want to go back to home base, you can click done and this will bring you into home base. If you're done with this template but you want to edit another, you'll need to press home and this will bring you back into the main area of Sutton Designer. So this brings you into our final section of Sutton Designer, which is My Designs. My Designs is where all of your saved templates will end up. So you can see that the one we just made is right here. I have a couple others that I have been working on, so they're all in here. And this is where you would go if you are looking for a template that you've made before. So say that you've made a template before and you've made some adjustments to it, you added all your information and you would really like to just copy it and do another listing the exact same way. You can click these three dots and then say duplicate and it will bring you another one. So now you don't need to go in and even use your brand assets to change your phone number, your feature sheets, your slogan, any of that. It's already in there. And you can just swap out the images and the text for your new listing. So that's a handy little trick. If you want to edit any of these, um, you see when you hover your mouse, it doesn't have that use button. You just have to click the three dots and click edit. And that will bring you into the design. Last thing in here is you can create folders. So say that you want to have a folder for each property. You can go like this and save that. And then now you can drag and drop everything for that property into a folder. And that way your designs won't get too cluttered. So that is everything for my designs and set designer. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us at support.sutton.com. Have a great day.